You just watched one of his vids like five minutes ago. Let me just double check, make sure my desktop audio is on. It should be. Well, your mic works. There he is. We're good. How's it Hello. going, man? Yeah, it's good. It's really good. How's it going? Are did, you you like, did you like the picture I had of you? Uh, I, it's like a little, like, I'm kind of like staring into my own soul when I look at that picture. I, I don't know. It's a little uncomfortable, actually. Somebody else already said that. So before we get anything on the go, I just want to let everyone know, including you, about how lucky that blue shirt is. Okay? <laughs> well, after the... watching your runs, I think 80% of the time you're wearing that shirt when you get the record. The, the real trick to that shirt, this is the, my, this is my secret, is I actually have three of that shirt. What? <laughs> I have three copies of that shirt, so I can just always wear it. It's 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 a uh, it's made of a really thin material. It's really great for streaming because I don't sweat basically when I'm wearing it. Ah, uh, true. See, I sweat so all I like the time it so much. when I'm streaming. I gotta like go yeah. through like four shirts. Yeah, yeah. It's my tech. <laughs> it's my. That's <laughs> it's your good tech. Yeah, yeah. That's how I credit warp. Right. So, you're like the master of the credit warps, essentially. Ah, uh, at this point, I yeah, that, that's kind of fair. Well, at least, been... at least the human, the human credits for us. Right, you've been on it yeah. since the beginning too, right? Like since since uh, it was first developed before even a human had done it, you were on you were on the go, right? You were like, "This is cool. I want to see if humans can." That's do it. that's actually not quite true. No, no. Jeff W three fifty six is the is the is the original is the OG the OG human. Um, oh, he actually did it as human first. He did. He did. He did it on emulator. Oh, that's right. I was right. the it first person right to do here. it on the console. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay. But I, yeah, ever since then, I've sort of taken taken charge. Uh, I haven't always had world records, but I've always been very involved in uh, developing the routes. And uh, it's like one of the things we'll go through is kind of the history of how all that went down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. So, was there any was there any um, problems with um, thinking that it's not going to work on console yeah and and when you when you watch my reaction from the very first one you'll see it you'll see it in my face because <laughs> i i really did not i was not sure that it was ever going to work i knew that it would work in uh i knew i mean i knew that it worked on emulator mm -hmm. and uh i mean i'd seen other credit sports from tassers but yeah. i didn't know if any of those were emulator were uh, were actually ever verified on <clears throat> on console so cool. it so, sounds like i might be louder than you no no i got it i got it okay, so cool. is it was like super exciting it was a super exciting time yeah yeah and and especially because uh, well in that run in that first run that we're about to see uh i actually thought i messed up something and that it was not going to work and so yeah. i was like double surprised because not only did i was i not sure if it would work overall uh i i i also thought it wasn't even possible for that run like even if it was like on emulator to work Right on. So, uh, for anyone in chat wondering, we have we have a video here that goes through like the the kind of like the little history, but the history of Seth, right? Not not just the true history, which he'll he'll let us know what's going on with that. But we we've got a video here, and it's uh, approximately twenty minutes long, and it's gonna go through his like his little thing about how he came to be what he is now with the whole thing. So um, my journey. Yeah, exactly. Your your nice little journey. So do you want to start the video now? And uh, the first one is yeah. close to six minutes, and yeah. That should be a good time for you to kind of explain to everyone what's going on. I mean, yeah. we got a lot of people here uh, who are in the Mario 3, so it's time to really show them why Super mm -hmm. Mario World might be better than Mario 3. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings here. All right, all right. Mario World versus Mario 3, man. It's a big, big fight for years. Okay, so uh, three, two, one, go. All right. So uh, f first, I, I want to talk about the history. Just like a brief history of where all this came from before yeah. I even started, uh, there were some tasses before before I did anything. Tool assisted speedruns, handcrafted, uh, you know, frame by frame with save states and everything. Uh, Master June and P4 Plus Two were some of the people to work on the very first credit warp that worked. That yeah. one was kind of insane. That one involved like getting a bunch of fish on screen <laughs> and and like leaving them on screen for a certain amount of frames because fish would like make calls to the random number generator and you needed like thousands of calls to the random number generator to get the seed for the random number generator just right. Damn. That was that was pretty crazy. But uh, eventually Master June found this uh, this way to do it which is actually pretty similar to well basically the the most recent route but it actually has similarities to all of the routes that you'll that you'll see 
throughout this uh, this interview. Yeah, the master tune uh, made made that 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 like kind of first uh, really good task. It was like forty two seconds um, from power on. Dang, which is super fast. Um, that was right before the cloud was discovered, the cloud glitch in eleven exit, mm -hmm. and and that that cloud glitch also relies on on a very on a very similar trick. It's called the item swap, and it involves Yoshi, a coin, and a charge and chuck. Um, yeah, what level is it? I've, I've definitely seen that before. That that's so you get so a cloud that, in your inventory item at the top, right? Yeah, and yeah, you use that cloud. Okay, you use that level. cloud on Bowser. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. But we don't use the cloud for credits for, but the same glitch. Um, gives you the cloud, but it also like crashes the game in a way that we can take advantage of, and that's sort of what all the credit warp is all about. Um, okay, hold on, just one sec. So everyone who has like tons of questions about like what he's doing right now, um, his second run after this one is pretty similar to this one, and that'll be time for for us to like ask questions about what he's doing in these levels. So yeah, be, be yeah, patient. Yeah. Since give just... it a couple minutes, you guys will get to hear about it. They're the exact same route, so I'll be I'll, I'll go into a lot more of the details um, the second time through. Basically, yeah. we just get in the uh, history here. Yeah. So this one that you're watching is the very first ever like console credits warp. Mm -hmm. The next one was my first world record. Nice. Um, so okay. So then uh, a few months after the cr the cloud was discovered for for Eleven Exit, uh, out of nowhere, there's this VOD surfaces, this Twitch VOD from somebody I didn't know at the time. Gotta I love the random Twitch did. VODs. Yeah, and uh, it's by a guy named Jeff W three fifty six. Okay. And so he did what you're seeing now. He did actually did it a bit faster than I did. He did it about a, about a minute faster than, than what I got in this video. Um, but it, it was a, a similar route. It, it had some differences. Uh, this, this route that you're seeing right now actually has some improvements over that. But, um, uh, but, but he, he just did, he did it. He did a credits warp. And, yep. and, and he didn't explain anything about it to anybody. Oh, he, no. just, he just did some streams. He like got it on his first run of the day or something, and then like posted a vod, and that was it. Was there and any controversy for cheating? There was a ton. Yeah, oh it got gosh. posted on Reddit, and like very prominent members of the Super Mario World community, both the Task community and RTA community, are both calling it out as like, we don't have any idea what this is. There's like nobody's verified this. We don't like we, change. Like this almost certainly isn't real. It's it's like it, maybe it's an emulation issue or something, but it's like none of this makes any sense, and and. Like, it doesn't make any sense that this would cause a credits warp. Now, credits warp was also somewhat new in that, around that area for RTA players, right? I don't even think Mario 3's was established at that point either. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it was kind of new to see this all, like, beat the game in, like, two seconds kind of thing, right? Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, there was a lot of controversy, and, and a lot of people didn't believe that it was real. Um, it turns out that it was, obviously, and a couple sure. months... Or, or the f following up on that on that video, some of the task community members uh, figured out, asked him how it worked, and he explained it to them. And they like made a um, made a task that sort of like went through the same route. But the thing about that is that nobody in the RTA community, no, none of the like real time human speedrunners, knew that knew that the tasters had verified it, and. And none of the tassers thought that the execution was like humanly possible. Of course, it, it, that's it how it always starts, thing. right? And so there was this whole disconnect where one community knew it was possible, but didn't think it was like really humanly possible. And the other community just didn't know it was possible at all. This was yeah. before, you know, before we were all together in a Discord. Do you do you, uh, do you have a do you have a memory of of year? Do you know? What, yeah, this was. Yeah, it's, uh, late. This was late 2014. Okay. And I know that because I went to my first AGDQ at. AGDQ 2015, mm -hmm. and I started talking with Dram55. Dram55 was the only member of the RTA community who knew that the Tassers had verified Jeff W's route. And so we, we got to talking about this route, because you talk about speedrunning things when you're at a speedrunning convention. Mm -hmm. And and he brought up, like, yeah, I know that it's legit. The Tassers have verified it. And so once I heard that, I was very intrigued. And I, you know, I found the sample task that they came up with, and... I looked into, you know, hit the description of how it worked, and I, I said to myself, I think this is possible. I think I can do it. And all the other part of that is just that, like, I, I have a very technical understanding of of computers, and, and I have a degree in computer science, right? I, I sort of understand how computers work. Yeah, exactly. And, and so I, I was able to look at it and say, yeah, I, I think so. And uh, and nobody else had really like stepped up. Um, so uh, I mean, so I single went... frame inputs and stuff like that—they're not impossible, right? I mean, a lot it's of people think it's not even single frame inputs. It's it's mostly not. It's mostly pixel perfect, which is actually a lot easier in most cases. I think pixel perfect is easier than frame perfect, in um, my opinion. And yeah. 
And so, so actually, on my on my way home, on the flight home. Oh, here we go. Here's the lead up to the the, the actual warp. And my reaction, pay attention to my reaction, because I did not think it was possible for this to work. <laughs> it, and it was just... Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you are. Nice, man. I just, I couldn't believe it. I was stunned. Okay, let's give it a quick um, pause for a sec. Yeah. Okay, okay I'm paused at 617. So, like, how did you, okay. how did you, like, feel at that time? So, so you said during the, the whole process, you're like, ah, I'm not going to get it. But, you know, it's that grind, right? You're, you keep trying. You, you keep resetting, yeah. resetting, resetting yeah. all the time. And then... It, and there was no expectation either because it wasn't deemed possible at that time yeah. on console. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't have done it if I didn't think it was possible. I thought it was possible, but I just I, it wasn't verified. And it, it involves some aspects of the Super Nintendo that do get actually emulated incorrectly a lot of the time. Uh, like the the actual the Wii U Virtual Console does not emulate the, the Super Nintendo well enough. No, to... neither, neither for Nintendo. Yeah, and, and so you can't do it on, on like, Virtual Console. So it was something that I, I thought was possible because I thought the emulators were accurate enough. But but then also, like, I thought I had a pixel that wasn't wasn't good. And I'll go into that uh, in the, the next time we go through the run. But, um, yeah, it was very surprising, and I just had this rush, like... Right? I, it just, like, worked. It worked. And I'm sure you felt that before. And oh, of course. With Mario was, Three, was, when that when that was established, we we kind of had the same. I don't know if it. I don't know for Mario Three if it was deemed like not humanly possible. But as soon as I saw that people were doing pixel perfect and a couple single frame stuff, it was like, well, there's no way no one's ever gonna do it right through the entire <laughs> existence. Eventually, it's gonna happen. So yeah. let's start the video back up again at three, two, one, go. So so I was flying home from AGDQ. Uh, memorizing a bunch of pixels, like I had like, written down some notes. I was like, I was so excited about this. Ah, oh, crap! My no, we're good. Okay, it's the next run. Mm -hmm. um, I was so excited about it, and so so that, and then you know, a couple of weeks later, I actually talked to Jeff W. This was a few months after he'd done his run and and been you know kind of shadowed over by the by the community. Yeah. But um, uh, but I talked to him and he helped me out through it, and that was actually super useful too. I uh, learned some things I wouldn't have been able to finish run runs without. So then, nice. then a couple of weeks later, I I learned enough and I practiced enough that I got the run that you saw. Yeah. Now that run was six minutes ish, somewhere around six minutes. Yeah. Uh, whereas Jeff W had a time of like four fifty nine. So so I had the sort of like console world record, which isn't a real world record. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's sort of like when I did when I verified it on console, I sort of like legitimized his run. Okay, so so now uh, you're starting to strategize here. Right. So, so th this run was the, was the first run where I actually took the world record. Cool. So I want to talk about what's going on. First of all, uh, I'm getting I got the midway point, and I'm getting a bunch of berries. And when you eat ten berries in Super Mario World, you get a, a, a mushroom. And so if you're Big Mario, you get a mushroom. You get a mushroom in your reserve box. And so the whole point of going through the level that first time was just to get a mushroom in my reserve box. Okay, cool. I was like, why did he even die in the yeah. first place? But okay. that, was a, that, was, that was not an accidental fall into the pit there. Um, and, okay, so you need that mushroom for f later. Uh, it's because you need to set the Y coordinate of, uh, of a certain sprite. And it's just, like make, it's just like to make the whole thing work and to make it like safe. Um, so here, this is something you saw me mess up a bunch of times in the previous run. Yeah. Uh, I'm... It's I'm I'm supposed to grab a throw block and a P switch at the same time. Okay, definitely. There's sort of like yeah. a fifty percent chance of that failing, and it was like very comical how many times it failed in the previous run. <laughs> I mean, this is a hard trick, though, right? You got a second try there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just fifty percent. There's there's no it's not hard. It's just subpixels working. Uh, no, I think it's like frame rules. Okay. There's like okay. every other frame. There's an interaction. Okay. Uh, then I so the reason you have to do that is to to get the P switch. You like create two P switches so that the one of the P switches will load into a certain sprite slot. Uh, Super Mario World has twelve sprite slots, and they're really important to how all of this stuff works because uh, just like the layout of memory is really important. Um, but but basically, there's twelve different sprites that can be on screen at a time, and they're all stored in sort of like bits of memory that are right next to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and so I need I sometimes I need. Uh, and the game always picks basically the highest available sprite slot to, to like when it loads a new sprite. Uh, and a sprite is something like a shell or a mole or a throw block or a, a mushroom. Yep. And so, uh, so there I, I I use the mushroom at the same time as the vine to get two Y coordinates, both for the vine and the mushroom. And then, 
Okay, we need to go back actually a little bit. Sure, sure. Because because this is really important. This yep. is like, I'm going to go back to so gonna... uh, the to... vine. <clears throat> All right. Uh, well, you're shell juggling. Do you want to go there? Uh, let's just tell me what timestamp you're at. I am at uh, 8:58 in the actual video. 2:17. Okay. Okay. Ready, set, go. Okay. So the throw block is important because I have to despawn, or I basically have to despawn the like particles when it breaks at specific <laughs> y coordinates and so so i have to put the throw block on the ground at a certain spot and then throw the shell at it and then scroll this like yep the i see it scroll the screen. screen yep um so that those go off screen at certain y coordinates now the really frustrating thing about that is there's like four different patterns in which those blocks can break oh my goodness. and only one of those four patterns works so there's like a 25 percent chance of it actually working and you have to be you have to scroll while it's at, while these like it's not frame perfect but it's it's hard yeah with that p switch in a certain spot as well mm -hmm. um so Wait. all of these like things that i'm doing very specific like x coordinates uh the reason for that is that we're like manipulating a crash and so um nor when the normally a processor is just like constantly looking for instructions of what to what to do right yeah and normally it's reading those instructions from the cartridge uh, during a crash, it can start reading instructions from other places. Uh, the <laughs> processor has no protection from reading instructions from RAM or, or there's other places it can get instructions from. Um, normally, it doesn't though because it's always the ROM. You know, keeps sending it to places to read instructions from that are within the ROM. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what arbitrary code execution is all about. It's crashing the game in a way that you can actually control what what code it runs. Yeah, and I mean, and, you apply the same thing with uh, Mario Three as well. Exactly. Although I think the glitch in Mario Three is a lot easier for some it's reason. A, yeah, there's simpler, just a random, yeah. there's a random door in the middle of nowhere for some reason. So, so, so like the P switch, the vine, the mushroom, those are all uh, the throw block uh, particle despawns. Mm -hmm. Those are all uh, like bits of memory that I need to have be at, like at specific values in order for that crash to get to get guided in just the right way, and where it ends up going is we tell the processor we end up manipulating all these things to tell the processor to execute the shell x coordinates the all these shells that i've been stomping on yeah picking, putting in pixel perfect spots and stomping on those all have to be at specific x coordinates and they're one after another in memory so you and, you have to do them in a perfect sequence like they have yeah. to be in a certain spot certain before order. you go to the next yeah so you can't start like later on a different shell in a different spot you have right. to do it and it's it's a series of like seven bytes or so. Okay, I just that, paused uh, it at four fifty three. Yeah. Okay. Um and so and so those shells are like a, a sequence of code. The the X coordinates of those shells are a sequence of code that do, they do a couple of things. That it uh it puts the game into credits mode. That's yeah. one thing. So there's like a there's like a memory location that says what game mode is it in. And when we change it from normal gameplay to credits mode. And there's actually a few different credits modes. Uh, and so depending on where you, which credits mode you set it to, you can jump to different places in the credits. And so uh, so you'll see actually different versions of the credits warp actually jumped to which, different Which, yeah, we've seen, credits. we've seen, like th there's one that takes you right to the, the Yoshi house too, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that'll, I think this one didn't have that property, right? This one had like the glitchy, weird, like stuff scrolling to the yeah, side. Yeah, side and scrolling and then it took this you actually, to these credits. Yeah, this is actually the second screen of the like, um, the, of the part of credits that says what all the enemies are. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so you set the game mode to credits and then you also have to like, fix the call stack and and that's just like a programming thing but basically it, the game is it, when it crashes it gets into a bad state and you need to fix fix this game state other in order for the game to sort of resume and for the game code to be able to continue doing what it needs to do so it actually doesn't crash and just black screen right right and yeah. so you have to do a couple things and that's why it takes so many bytes of code in super mario brothers 3 you only have to do i think three shells right uh, well, right? when it first started, like if we were in the state like you're at there now, there was a lot of like up and down through the level, getting a lot of X okay. and Ys. But at the point it's at now, yeah, three shells. Yeah, and three flip, shells flip are all you pipe. need. Yeah, and and so because you that's because you don't have to fix all the like game state, mm -hmm. um, nope. and so that takes more shells because of that. Mario three um, for anyone out there wondering about the Mario three wrong warp, it's way less complicated than this. Yeah, uh, and and the reason it's the the main reason it's way less complicated is because 
when you crash the game by you know glitching into that pipe and touching the block that you're not supposed to be able to touch um when you crash the game that way it kind of just goes straight to the shell like the sprite x coordinate table and starts executing instructions from there we have to do a lot more memory manipulation mm -hmm. to get it sort of like craft the, the path that the processor takes through memory and get it to jump to the right uh part of memory to actually execute those mm -hmm. and that was the genius of what jeff w356 found out he, exactly he, he, it's he like figured out how to do it. that yeah and yeah. um and at this point now i understand how to go about doing that but at, the, at that time it was sort of a mystery how he how the hell he figured that out um <laughs> right we, we'll talk about more more about how you could go about figuring that, that out later okay so let's 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 dwell in a little bit more i'm gonna go ahead and press play three two one go so i'm at 455 as it's going and yeah. so we're we're gonna dip into the you forgot to split here but i mean that's okay so what yeah. do you remember the exact time of this run it was 455 455 okay so then and that was the first world record that i that i i think ever had in any game here it is the blue shirt guys you know this run's gonna be it <laughs> so so at this point uh, once I started doing this, a lot of other runners started getting interested in it because it was a totally new category for Super Mario World. We actually ended up splitting what was called any percent. That was then called that became eleven exit, and this became zero exit. Although I still prefer to call it Credit's Warp. Yeah, um, essentially, yeah, yeah, Credit's Warp. So other people started working on it. Carl Sagan forty two dots are cool. Dram fifty five, uh, P four plus two. Nathan is bored. All these people helped contribute a bunch of stuff. And uh, so this was a new strategy that we figured out. Remember those? The remember when I had to like d like break that throw block and scroll the particles off screen? Yeah. Uh, well, the 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 way that we did that involved a bunch of like juggling shells just to like get both a shell and a throw block block in the same part of the level. At any point, uh, let me know if you want to pause. Just say pause, okay. and I've got my cursor over the pause. Okay. Um, and so it, it like took a long time to get the throw block and the shell in the same place and at a like high enough y coordinate. Yeah. to despawn those particles at the right y-coordinate. And so Dram figured out, and then I figured out a good setup for, for um, how to use this P-switch here at the end. First try uh, and that. We still have to do this thing with like getting a second P-switch and, and, the, and, and the, the block and uh, the throw block and the P-switch grabbing them at the same time. Uh, but, uh, but it's a, lot, a much faster place here to destroy that throw block and, and despawn the particles. And so this saved a lot of time. I don't remember what the exact time ends up being. There you go, right there. Like three something. Yeah, having that yellow block there. If anyone hasn't yeah. noticed, though, he hasn't died and he doesn't have a mushroom. That's right. Um, and that is... I don't actually remember why I didn't have to do the mushroom and vine anymore. <laughs> um, I think it's... The, the mushroom and vine are I, were actually sort of like a safety strat. It's because those Y coordinates of those might get executed uh, just because the the sprite y coordinate table is right before the sprite x coordinate table and it's possible to jump just before the sprite x coordinate table and so if you did that you would jump to the end of the sprite y coordinate table and and so you you wanted that code to like kind of do nothing mm -hmm. and not not like do something that would end up crashing the game yeah and so so we got some safe values out of the vine and the mushroom by by doing the trick that i did but it wasn't strictly necessary so some people might ask when you do the slow hops on all those turtles you're not actually specifically putting them in place you're just stopping them so then you can move their shells and control that's them, right, right? Okay. yeah I'm, I'm just trying to get them all so that they're not walking around and running into me as i as i maneuver them actually i remember now why it wasn't necessary it's because um uh we figured out that you could spit out the shell with Yoshi. And in fact, this is something that we still hadn't really figured out is that it's much faster to do this whole section by spitting out all the shells with Yoshi rather than stomping them. Like Yeah, so them you can them. spit them out on their the proper... Right. This run probably would have been like 15 seconds faster if I if we had like realized that at the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, by spitting out the last shell with Yoshi, for some reason we, we did it with the last shell, but not the other. I don't know. It's so um, weird how... I know, man. Trust me. I know. It, like, even in Mario 3, we used to, like, go to the top of the level and come back. It's pointless. But yeah, you get a good Y coordinate there, and you don't need the mushroom or, or the vine to have... Because you just... Th those Y coordinates just aren't going to matter, is why. And there we go. There's credits again. Now, this actually this warps into a different place in credits. Okay, this I is... just paused that 1521 in the video. Okay. Okay. Um, and so this warps into a little bit earlier spot in the credits. This is actually the earliest that you can warp into easily by just writing a single value to the game mode. Yeah. Uh, you can, you can warp earlier in the credits if you write two values, both, if you basically both modify the game mode and also like a cutscene value, um, Weird. which is what the task does. Yeah. But, um, 
but it takes it's like you you can't really fit it in just the shells with the, with the way we're doing it with the shells you can't really do it that way do you have any controversy in the actual speedrun right now about which cutscene triggers which and like which could be faster uh by I... now especially since the very first credits warp was pretty late in the credits anyway mm -hmm. we there's not really any controversy over it anymore when this first came out people were like pretty there were some people who who really disagreed with this being like a, a successful completion of the game because oh, it like skips the entire staff credits there's no like actual credits uh the the rationale that i use and that i like is that it does get to the screen that says the end and that's the, kind of the ultimate decider of whether or not you're in the credits but um uh, it's it's debatable. Now, you know? does this game have the once you get to the end, can you press start and start the game over again? No, no. The game there you go. That's your answer reset. right there. Yeah, that's your answer right there. So, so it it was for sure very controversial. The fact that I called this the any percent world record at the time, I had a lot of people very mad at me. There were people like making up stories about me on Twitter, <laughs> <laughs> like of horrible things that I that I had done or or, or something like that. But of course. Um, now it's all cooled down and people just love it like it's 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 just like a really cool technical category yeah i mean a lot of stuff like that at first it's like nobody knows really what to call these things or, or you mm -hmm. know how to interpret it for runs and stuff like that i mean we never expected anything like that right and and everyone looks to the highest runners to really make everything set right yeah but so. I, I feel like i had a lot of support from the like people who were actively running the game exactly it was like it was sort of more like the sort of the people kind of watching from the outskirts the people who you know, maybe in other games or whatever that, that were i don't know they they were just mad <laughs> some of yeah. them yeah so, i got a lot of support too i feel like this is where this takes a big turn though so i'm gonna go ahead and press play in three two one go and i feel like this is where the run really takes a leap yeah, you're so, now changing it from mere minutes instead of a couple minutes here, right? Like so I, I went on a cruise. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay. There was, you know, there was actually another route in between these two. I it didn't, didn't know. No. Nope. But we, oh, we can explain it. Okay. Hold on. I, I can pause it right here at, at uh, 11 okay. seconds. And you yeah, can quickly right, explain it. Yeah, so there was another route that actually was, oh, I, I actually, I, I, I feel like we should show it. I'm going to look up the video um okay yeah yeah we can we can get it up um crap so it was like uh one i had like a 146 so let me look this up but it was hard it was <laughs> very hard um man, yeah because there, there there was a big big gap right in the here we go the, <laughs> get it up <laughs> Cube, like. oh shoot this isn't mine but I, i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna link you the old world record by carl sagan okay okay sure and uh, just just because it's the same route, his run is better than mine by like five seconds. But and it's it's good to touch base on, sure. Um, and it was hard. Okay, so I'm at the beginning of the video. Okay, let me take a look here. Let me get it up on YouTube here. I think I have. Hold on, let me do that. And oh right, you have I... to get it on the stream too. Yeah, I think I can switch to this. No. Nope. Hmm. Oh, because I already have a Chrome video up. This is oh. gonna be this is gonna be annoying. Okay. Uh. Well. <laughs> Damn well, you, Carl. I can, I can just describe it and and I can link it in the chat too, if. Yeah. No. Well, keep talking. I'll I'll set it up right okay. now. I'll set it Basically, up. Basically, keep, I, keep I went on a cruise and when I came back, like the whole run was way different, and they'd cut off like a minute and a half <laughs> from the time, and um, <clears throat> and so the trick that that they found was instead of using a throw block to create those particles, mm -hmm. uh, the exact same particles come when you spin jump on like a yellow turn block, which kinda there like, happened to be kind of like what you did a little bit before though, right? It it's uh. Well, I mean, it creates the same particles. What do you mean? Uh... Like, in, in the previous run before, oh, near the P-switch block, you did the spin jumps on the yellow blocks. I mean, that's not what your purpose was, but that's, right. what, you're, that's what you're trying to say. Like, yeah, that's, right. you, were, you were applying that same. Well, you got it up, same... so it looks like we can, we can watch this. Yep, yep definitely. So, okay. um, I got it at the very beginning. Three, two, yeah. one, go. <clears throat> and, uh... It looks like, yeah, it starts with a failed attempt there. <clears throat> so, Carl. the... The, 
Yeah, so the route is, it, it actually became very different. We actually started using, there's a charge and chuck at the end of the level, mm -hmm. which we started using instead of there's a charge and chuck in the middle of the level. I guess I haven't explained the item swap. Um, the item swap that actually causes the crash. I'll explain that real quick, actually. I can do that in, the, in a few, few seconds <laughs> we have here. So the item swap is when See you See how complicated Yoshi, this is, guys? <laughs> when you have Yoshi, and he gets a coin on his tongue, like he gets a coin stuck to his tongue, he starts, his he has like a pointer. The code for Yoshi has a pointer to the like memory that's holding that sprite, the, the coin. And then if you collect that coin before Yoshi finishes eating it, and then load a charge and chuck into the same bit of memory that's been freed up where that coin used to be, uh, it, it's called the item swap. And it lets you uh, eat a charge and chuck, which you are normally not allowed to do, and that's yeah. what matches the game. You, you apply that same concept with the cloud though, right, as well? Yeah, it's, kinda... it's the same thing. In the cloud, you're just trying to prevent the crash, whereas with the uh, with the credit swap, you're doing a bunch of stuff to manipulate the crash and like kind of working for you, which is a lot harder. Mm -hmm. Very cool. But uh, so you, you could see Carl did the same thing with uh, with sort of the shells. He was uh, shooting he's eating them all the berries. Of them. Yep. Yeah, he's eating all the berries. Actually, because in this in this route, you used a mushroom instead of a, a moving coin uh, as part of the item swap. Okay. So you would get the the mushroom on Yoshi's tongue, and. Uh, and then load a charge and chuck before he finishes eating the mushroom. And you also had to get hit by the charge and chuck while it was uh, uh, while it was doing his thing. Okay, so this is the hard part. So he's sort of just like mo clearing out some blocks there, um, and then he's going to place that P switch because that's still part of the route. Yep. But uh, but now this spin jump is super precise. Still has the one in four chance of getting the right pa uh, like particle pattern. And so you had a one in four chance, and then you had like a a trick. It was like you had like to switch from right to left for just like two frames and then press right again. <laughs> it's sort of like the flagpole glitch, I think, in difficulty from what, I've, from what I've heard. Yeah. Really hard. So that, that that last spin jump, when he loaded the yellow blocks, he went on spin jump. He just kind of went for it, right? Yeah. Which and, is and essentially the, the, what you have to do. The crazy thing is you have to, you can't scroll the screen to get like, you can't, before we would scroll the screen to just move all the particles off screen while they were frozen. Mm -hmm. You can't do that for this one. You have to scroll the screen and then like, get them off screen by just moving to the right far enough. And that's so that's insane. what made it so hard. But I mean, see, the thing is with, with short speed runs like this, it's not, it's not that bad of an idea to go for those uh, quick risky strats, right? I mean, it's a couple yeah, minutes. Reset. Yeah. At the same, at the it same time, be... that was super demoralizing to spend eight hours and like, get one, <laughs> one warp to credits, you know, right? and it yeah. was a bad time. <laughs> yeah. And even it might, yeah, it might not even be good, a good time. Cause after a couple hours you start playing worse, right? You start being sloppy yeah. sometimes. And then Pangea Penga actually came up with a different route that you, you, it's almost the exact same as this, except instead of using turn blocks, he used the like sparkles of coins. And it was this insane route that was just like insanely hard to do. He was the only one who ever did it. And he held world record for like a year with that one. Holy crap. But, uh, but it's the same general route as this. As this one coming up right here? No, no, no. Uh, or as uh, that's, That was Penga. That was Pangea Penga. Oh, okay, I um, thought you were referring uh, Panga's route to the route we're about to see now, but you're referring no, it to the no, route No, no, it was Carl the same route as the one Carl, yeah, Carl, that we just saw from Carl cool. Sagan, 42. Um, yeah, so that one stood for a year, and uh, Holy and the next route you're about to see was the first route that I developed all on my own. Ooh, uh, that's and Seth Bling I, I Incorporated. Actually, I, I had a little bit of help from P4 Plus 2, but but the, the vast majority of the, the work and the research was done by me. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm at uh, one or fifteen forty four in the video. Is that where you are? Sure. Three, two, one, go. Okay. So this route is called uh, it is called the Rolex route, and it stands for RLX because you have to be holding uh, both shoulder pads R and L and the X button all at the same time during the item swap at the end. It's a lot faster. Uh, first, you have to duplicate this Yoshi block. Boom. Oh, by the way, the R the Rolex thing is also used in Eleven Exit for Cloud. Okay. Uh, cool. So you have to duplicate this Yoshi block. You have to despawn the shell fragments from that Yoshi block at certain velocities. <laughs> then you do, then you do the this like shell coding frag, uh, shell shell coding thing. Uh, we we finally figured out to use <laughs> Yoshi for all this, <laughs> uh, which which also you saw Carl Sagan do. Yeah. Uh, which is as you can see a lot faster than throwing the shells up, right? Look and then stomping on them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that shell I just like kind of had to get out of the way. That wasn't uh, that wasn't uh, pixel perfect. Okay. Uh, this one is also not pixel perfect. Uh, I had to, uh, God, I had to like do a, t a t like turn around and then I had to get a white splat to appear at a very specific x coordinate on screen. And I then it you just referring goes. referring to that splat, yeah. 
and then it goes straight to an item swap on screen. Why don't we watch that run again? Sure, let's do it again. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna go uh, back. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, to 15, 1542. Okay. Okay, I'm there. Okay. It's already started. Yeah, okay. Uh, so okay, so so once again, there's like a bunch of things I have to do. I have to get I duplicate Yoshi blocks. Mm -hmm. I have to then despawn Yoshi eggshell particle fragments. At specific Y velocities, vertical velocities. So we're gonna see and that so right here. Yeah, there's a setup for that, and, and <laughs> it basically involves just like walking to the right pixel, walking to the correct pixel while the, while the the eggshell is breaking. Yeah. If you overshoot or undershoot, it's shot. You have to restart. We have actually a much safer setup for that nowadays. Then I do the I shell think coding. I've seen it yet. And then I need two graphics to appear at specific X coordinates on the screen. One is uh, the the Mario holding a shell and uh, facing the screen, which happens when he like is holding a shell and, and turns around, basically. Mm -hmm. And so I grab a shell and I do that. And then the other is the white splat whenever you kick a right shell. Right there. And so that was right there. And you use the background, right? Visual cues of the background. Uh, I don't use the background. I use the grass that's underneath Mario. Okay. There's cool. like a repeating pattern. You can kind of see which pixel you're on. And it is pixel perfect, all of those things. Boom. And then there's the item swap. Oh yeah, and during the item swap, it's possible to like bonk on the chuck as he like gets reeled in by Yoshi, and if you bonk on the chuck, it'll create a white splat and that ruins it. So that makes it hard too. Oh yeah, yeah. So so I mean, the item swap sounds awesome and everything, but it can really screw you over a lot of yeah. times. Like you could have done all that perfectly, but the item yeah. swap you could have screwed up. Yeah. So fast forward another year, Furious has held the world record for ex almost exactly one year, Woo, Furious, and I came up you. with an. I came up with another new route, and that's what we're about to see here. This is this is all like, from here on, it's within the last two weeks. Is this still? I'm I'm paused by the way. Is this still? Oh. Do you still call this like the Rolex route? Uh, it does still use the Rolex. You have to hold R L N X at the end, um, but it's like to disambiguate it from the other route. Mm -hmm. I've been calling it the no shell code route, and the reason for that is we don't use the shells anymore. I mean, we, we use a shell to Damn. do, like, the white splat and the turnaround thing. Um, All right. This should be And also for, the, also for the block duplication. Okay. So uh, I'm but... at 17.02 in the video. All right. Give me a sec. Sure. Okay. This is insane. Like, the, the generations of how it goes. I mean, everyone's yeah. had, like, a, a chunk of this and taken and yeah. taken a piece off, which is it's fantastic. All right. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Okay. So the, the trick to this. Blue shirt again, guys. Blue shirt, it's the same. <laughs> um, the, the trick to this one is uh, instead of executing those, you know, six or seven bytes of code from the sprite x coordinate table, mm -hmm. uh, instead of doing that, we execute some code from the joypad auto read registers. And what that means is there's a little portion of RAM, it's eight bytes long, that stores which buttons are currently being pressed on up to four controllers. <laughs> Insane. And, and these eight bytes. Uh, two of them we use for the main controller, and we can't really use those. So there's six bytes left over. And uh, the only way to have that many controllers plugged in is you have to have multi-taps. So there's two multi-taps. Each multi-tap has two controllers plugged in, and those controllers have buttons held down with spring clamps and binder clips. Okay? And the buttons that they have held down form a binary pattern that basically just store, like sets a bunch of uh, those six bytes to, to specific values. And so it runs six bytes of code, and those six bytes of a code happen to be enough to warp to credits. That is and crazy. And so it totally cuts out the shells. Keep going. Those... I'm gonna be I'm gonna be backtracking during just this run here. I'll okay. keep I'll keep backtracking. It keep going. Okay. And and so it just totally uh, it totally removes the need for the shells uh, mm -hmm. anymore. We still have to do again those those graphical things. What about that splat. first shell? You run in and you jump yeah. on like the middle shell, and then you go away. Is that frame? Is that pixel perfect? Uh, that is not pixel perfect. The point of doing that is I unload the shell that's on the ground. I load a Koopa into the sprite slot that was, that was occupied by that shell. And then I reload the shell on the ground into sprite slot zero, which is the lowest possible oh, sprite slot. So okay. you have to have enough sprites on screen when you load that shell. Yeah. That's basically what it is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so, be, uh, so that's the one shell that you have to program with. It's, it's not really used for code. It's used... Uh, to as again to kind of get the crash to execute code from the right places, which in this case is the controllers. Yeah, because that's what you were explaining during the first playthrough. 
Yeah. Um, now, do you, are you still doing the uh, Y velocity of the shell fragments? Yeah, so that's okay. still part of it. Uh, the, okay. the, the, the white splat, the turning around while holding a shell, those okay. are all still part of it. The white There's splat the you're doing now, though, is in a different spot. It's not back at the beginning first shell, which you used before. It's right by the Yoshi now. It's in a different spot on the level, but what actually matters is this is this is the location on screen. Okay, so that's why so you're still in the same spot yeah. on the screen, just in yeah. a different section. And that's why of the I, level. I scroll right. You'll see me scroll the screen all the way right before before doing those things. So you're still in the uh, same spot. So, so is it the on, Yoshi yeah. fragments for Yoshi himself and the One Up Egg, or just no? The it's just the, egg? it's just the the One Up Egg actually. The, those fragments like use the same memory as what as the memory that was used for the Yoshi eggshell. So. Uh, oh. It's it's whatever the last value was. Those just sort of like stick around in memory. They never get cleared out. Okay. Even though they, you know, the the fragments go away. But yep. but whatever whatever was last in memory there is what really matters once we get to that item swap and the crash happens. And uh, and so yeah, it's just the one up that matters. So how come you wait for the coin? Is it because where the flame hit it, you were you were unable to reach it, or so. So there's like a very specific like series of things that has to happen in a very specific order, and there is a like crazy requirement which I haven't mentioned yet. <laughs> okay, so so again, I have to wait for the coin. Uh, th you can actually do it faster than that, and in the next couple of runs, you'll see me do it faster and not wait quite so long. Mm -hmm. But you de do need to wait for it a little bit so that it'll get on Yoshi's tongue, and also so that you have enough time to go collect the coin. Uh, collect the coin, and then also you have to load the charge and chuck. Yeah. Uh, so you have to basically there's like a line that you cross where if you go right of that line, you'll be far enough to the right that the charge and chuck loads and basic loads basic in the... spawning, right? Basic. Yeah. Yeah. Basic spawning. And um the requirement I haven't told you yet though is that Mario has to be on a specific X coordinate. That's what makes the whole thing work, yeah. right? The item yeah. swap. That's why so, it can so... be really janky. Uh, it 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 actually it's po like it was very close to not requiring that. It's just like the bit of code that that we that we have to run from. So the the controllers, uh, I, again, remember I have six bytes of codes in the controllers. Yep. What that does, what the six bytes of code uh, does, is actually broken up into two instructions. One instruction jumps into some code that's on the game cartridge. It kind of jumps into it mid mid function, a place that you wouldn't normally jump into it, mm -hmm. uh, and it runs that until the end of the function. And then returns back to the controllers. So it like runs a little chunk of code from ROM, and then and then runs the other instruction from the controllers. And then the second bit of code from the controllers jumps to a different place, also in ROM, Jesus. also mid function. And it just so happens that <laughs> the first place that you jump uh, takes Mario's x coordinate and subtracts ten, I think. Or adds ten or something. Adds uh, yeah. It adds ten to Mario's x coordinate and stores that to a RAM address. And then the second place that you jump reads that x reads that value from that RAM address and uses it to determine the game mode. Insane. And so, so if you if Mario's x coordinate is off by one either direction, one or more in either direction, uh, it won't get read the second time you jump into into the the code in in the in ROM. Uh, it won't get it won't it will just won't have the right value and you won't get the right game mode yeah and it'll just crash the crash or actually will be it's, it's kind of funny it's it doesn't necessarily crash there's if you're one pixel too far left it actually freezes for a moment and then goes to the title screen <laughs> if you are three pixels too far left instead of fading out and warping the credits uh it fades out at like half speed and then just stays black forever and so I've actually been tricked into thinking I had a world record. Oh yeah, because you're waiting. Fading out. Because normally when it fades out, I'm like, oh yes, I got a world record. Or I got a warp, but it, it can actually just fade out slowly. And Damn. You're just like, oh god, this is not a real warp, is it? It's it's strange how that works. I, I just want to stop you there for a sec because it's it's really strange. As soon as you mentioned, it goes back to the beginning of the game. Uh, you can do the same thing in Mario Three and in Mega huh. Man One. <laughs> where you where that. you do the arbitrary code execute and it just takes you right back to the menu screen just boom that's yeah. it. It, it and it's so yeah. so there's so there's not only just the option of it taking you to the end or crashing it can take you all over the place right yeah. and that's Th the, this the... one with this one the way it works like there those are really the only two options other than crashing so okay that's that's funny for those <laughs> um, mario 3 it, yeah. man it can take you to like world 8 some weird pipe and then you can it's so many places it's crazy yeah.
but but this is it's like horrible that you have to like be on a specific x coordinate while you're doing this very complicated item swap glitch right yeah you're jumping off yoshi and collecting a coin and loading a chat like there's a lot of th or things to even just get the item swap to work in the first place at this point do you think you're uh very good at the item swap now like it's not that hard for you right <laughs> uh just doing the item swap isn't is yeah it's pretty easy yeah uh, but like doing it with whatever requirements there are for whatever category the cloud uses the item swap there's a couple different credit swap categories or uh, mm -hmm. routes that we've used um i'm actually working on a on a kill bowser route right now uh where instead of warping to the credits you warp to about the bowser fight and, and kill bowser since Insane. some people might not consider credit swap you know a true completion and so there's this other like, <laughs> so you're bowser fine thing. all right We'll, yeah. we'll kill Bowser, okay, guys? Right, exactly. And so I'm working on that right now, actually. I think I have some some route that's around maybe three minutes, and I'm going to be working on uh, actually doing runs of that probably in the next couple of days. Good, good. That'll um, be that'll be really but, cool. Uh, that has sort of like a different requirements for the item swap. It's more similar to 11 exit. Do, will but, it be yeah. less or more complicated than this whole process? It's it's more complicated in terms of the number of uh, RAM addresses that you have to manipulate. Of course. But, but it's a lot easier because you don't have that requirement at the end of Mario's X coordinate. Right on. Okay, so I am at 1817 in the video, and this is... This 1817. Is, this is another historical run semi because you're going to be the first to break 50 seconds, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm All ready. right, three, two, one, go. Now, this is so, somewhat the same, though, right? Kind of? It's the same route. All the, all these, this one and the next one, they're all the same, like, general route. This is based on, you know, the the, the work that I did. The, the big difference here in this one is going to be at the beginning. Instead of doing that thing where I bounce on the shell and come back left and then go back to the right, mm -hmm. uh, I... There's like this weird thing where you can scroll the screen at the beginning and then kind of turn around. You load a Koopa, a naked Koopa, and then the last shell is actually in the correct sprite slot. And right then everything on. else from there on is the same. And so that saves a little bit of time and also just had much better execution. You can see I'm not like, there's, when I've... there's all these pixel perfect things and I'm just getting them right on the first try. Yeah, or that one good. I didn't, but... When I first watched this, I was like, so why did he stand at the start? Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, he actually yeah. scrolled the screen. You don't hear right. it, unfortunately, because we're, we're talking, but it's the same. Yeah. Yes! Yeah, and I was yeah! excited because that was the first sub-50. Exactly. Um, cool milestone. I mean, a sub-1 is sub one minute is obviously a cooler milestone. Mm -hmm. But uh, Do you want to just go right into the next run here? Uh, I'm replaying that run again. Okay. okay. So okay. people can get a good look at that yeah. that intro, because I think you don't use that again now. I think that's over, uh, isn't it? Yeah, we did a we did a we figured out a new uh, beginning of the level two. That one's that of one was kind of hard to execute because you needed to sort of like you're like back fading. With, yeah, right. You you're needed like... to turn around with a very quick uh, tap left. Other mm -hmm. like the the longer you hold left, if you hold it for a few frames, you'll like lose almost all your velocity. Yeah. But yeah, then there's a bunch of pixel perfect things that uh, that also went really well in that run. So is the 2,185 attempts just for this sequence, or is that just how your splits are? That's I think that's for all credit swarp runs. I think I've had the same splits file okay, for cool. all of my credit swarp run, runs. Right on. So now I'm I'm at, hold on, I'll pause it at 919, and then... Okay. Okay, three, two, one, go. All right, so then this is the current world record. Uh, there's a couple of runners maybe doing... Oh, okay, Furious is in the chat, so... He didn't get a world record. Uh, so this is the current world record. Yay. Aaron is also, Area 51 is also trying. He's the current world record holder for 11 exit. Mm -hmm. He's been He's trying. trying as well, yeah. Uh, but they haven't taken me down. This is, uh, this is the current world record. The big uh, improvement is at the beginning here. Uh, we figured out uh, Dots Are Cool and Amarati Kondo figured out uh, a way to do it where you can just grab the shell from the very beginning and you just have to land on a Koopa the right way. And it's uh it's not quite frame perfect it's actually there's a two or three frame window oh thank god finally but um but every everything else is the same but that that's quite a bit faster it lets you do do uh there's actually only like two pixel perfect things that you can do, like... <laughs> the panic the panic split i love it yeah that was I, split fantastic. Pretty late on that. I was like i wasn't expecting it to work of course sorry i didn't I mean to cut you off like... it's just i love the yeah. i dude i'm guilty of the panic split yeah. i i understand that... The, the whole thing just has such a low chance of working because because of that thing at the end where yeah. it just has to be perfect. 
Which, and, I uh, mean, you guys make it look really easy, and the average person can be like, well, why is it so hard for, like, everyone to, yeah. like, beat your record? And, and I mean, that's that's why, right? Because it's just, there's just oh. so much crap that needs to... Okay. Furious is, is saying in your chat that uh, that he and Amarati Kondo came up with the strat, although it is, like, very similar to one Dots came up, Dots are Cool came up with yeah. as well. So trying to, trying to properly credit everyone. It's all good. And it, I, sort I of independently it. figured it out. Um, we love you, Furious. Don't worry about it. But yeah, the, the beginning of this run, the, the big difference is you have to, like, land on a walking Koopa while he's on a specific pixel. So he's, like, walking at a pixel every two frames. And so you, that's why there's, like, a two to three frame window. Right there. Just depending on how the execution works so, out. So I paused it there. I don't know if you're still watching the stream. Yeah. But on the video right there is yeah. essentially... Yeah. And then, so and then when you hit point, that Koopa out... At this point, we've gotten rid of the turn block. We've gotten rid of the P switch. We don't do the yellow turn blocks anymore. There has nothing to do with any chuck. There's no mushroom yeah. in the inventory. There's no subsections. There's no death. Uh, there's no white yeah. splat. Uh, does this one still rely on... There is a on... white splat. There's still white splat, and there's still turnaround. Okay, those are the white two, splat. Those are like the two additional things. And, and there's also the requirement for uh, for something in sprite slot zero to be a certain X coordinate. Yeah. So the splat so and the shell, or the egg, yeah. the egg fragments, right? Those are still the... Yeah, and the egg fragments, right? Yeah. Right there. Okay. There's and the duplicated Yoshi block. That's actually required too. Yeah. Yeah. None of that stuff's hard for you anymore, though, right? That's all. <laughs> that's all jokes. Not compared to the item swap at the end. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, we'll, let, but... we'll let we'll let we'll let all your videos roll, okay. so people have stuff. Yeah. And um, um, if there's anyone in chat who's who has any very specific questions for Seth. Now would be a good time for you guys to kind of spam some of your questions while we're talking, if you want him to, to answer, answer any of that stuff. But is there anything that you would like to say about anything? Well, just before we get started into like any Q and A's. Uh, I I know that like you like in, in these interviews, you you really like the interviewees to talk about questions that get asked a lot. Of course. And the, so that... the question that gets that asked the most is, is this a good time to? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Go ahead. That. The question that you ask the most is how do, how does anyone find this? Right? How do people figure this out? Because there's yeah. so much like crap going on. Like, it just seems so esoteric, and it and honestly, it is right. Like, <laughs> like part of like eggshells Y velocity despawns. We tried that by <laughs> trial and error, and like, just like what? figured out. Oh yeah, if you right. And of course, the answer is is not. There's no trial and error. There is trial and error, but it's not the. It's not the like. The kind of trial and error where you just like try a bunch of things and see if it works at credit. Yeah. Uh, so there's a, like a bunch of tools that I use, and they all sort of, by using all these tools together, I can get a picture of what's going on to the point where I can start to manipulate how this stuff, when a crash happens, how, how the processor figures out what to do and and get it to execute code that I want it to execute. Yeah. And so some of these tools, probably one of the biggest is is called trace logging. And so a trace logger uh, is a feature of, of an emulator. I use BizHawk mostly. Uh, it logs every single processor instruction that the processor executes during emulation. And that's like hundreds of thousands or millions. Yeah, it's really millions of, of processor instructions. Uh, and it just log, logs them all to a text file. And by doing that, I can see, like, for instance, when the charge and chuck crash happened, I can see exactly you know, what, uh, like where the processor started executing code from and what the state of the processor was at that. And I can even like figure out what was in RAM at the time and how, how the values in RAM caused that to, uh, cause the processor to, you know, do certain things after that crash. So the trace log is super useful. Uh, I use it all the time while I'm like experimenting to just see, like, I tried this, this memory, like minute, like modifying this memory value and just like, have it crash again. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of the times I'll, I'll make a task actually to, to try all these things so that I can keep replaying the same set of inputs. But, but, uh, I like make the task and then I actually modify Ram addresses in the emulator and like see how that modifies the trace log. See what, what, what changes that causes. In the Do you think we have tassers to thank for stuff like this? I mean, the yeah, correlation, sure. the correlation between tassing and, and just crashing in general, yeah. right? Not many people it's... would try and, try and use crashes to, to benefit which is insane. Yeah. It's, it's uh, tassers and it's, and it's also to a large degree, ROM hackers. Super Mario world has one of the biggest ROM hacking communities. Oh, easily. And it's, it's the reason that the, both the, the code and also all the Ram 
addresses are so well documented. You can yeah. like read a disassembly of the game that's like actually pretty readable, uh, somewhat readable, and it like tells you like what all the RAM addresses are that are being used and modified and, and read and, and written and all that. And then there's also a really good RAM map that I refer to. If you just Google SNW RAM map, and it, there's yeah, a, isn't there a website? It's called like. Yeah. It's SMW like a wiki. Central. Oh yeah, SMW Central. That will have everything. Yeah. But I think there's also a wiki for other games if you were interested. I think it's something like Crystal. It's like a wiki Crystal or something. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, sure. SM, I, I SMW, SMW Central. Wiki for that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and and so like there's just like a lot of documentation that I I thankfully don't have to like figure all these things out for myself. Now some of it I actually did have documents on my own. Uh, the, the the stuff with like the white splat and the. Um, and the uh, uh, what's the, the turnaround, the shell turnarounds. Mm -hmm. uh, those are part. Those are from a part of memory called OAM, Object Attribute Memory, which is where the game stores like all the X and Y coordinates of all the like sprites that are being on, drawn, drawn on screen. Things like the P switch and Mario, and all the moles and uh, some other things that move around. Um, and and it really wasn't documented. And I just sort of had to like try things and and watch watch memory. Just like it, watch, watch the memory, memory emulator and just see what memory changed and when when memory certain memory addresses changed. That's so. So I did have so to document funny. some of that myself. But, so um, I guess so. What so what would be the the short version of how do you guys how do, how do people figure this out? What, what do you think yeah. a, a nice short version a of short, that would nice be? Short version is I mean it's helpful to get a degree in computer science. <laughs> I recommend that. <laughs> it's it's like you have to understand what what is going on at a very low level. What a, what a processor does. Um, so like start studying, start studying assembly, start studying computer systems. It's all useful. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, there's no easy way to figure this stuff out. Yeah. So, uh, turntable has somewhere. a question. Is that a, is that a legitimate question with your, with your was Minecraft it? stuff? What, what in in chat, question? uh, turntable list. Are you, in, are you in the chat? Or do you want me to ask you? I can ask you the question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in the chat. Oh, I didn't see that question. Uh, well, uh, let's see the question. Yeah, why don't you ask it? Probably uh, ask him, please. Who do credits warp inside Minecraft built on his in-game Minecraft Super Nintendo emulator? Is that even a so? Thing? I didn't make a Super Nintendo emulator. I made an Atari emulator. <laughs> uh, I was thinking of doing a dragster speed run, but the the thing about it is, it's it's like runs one frame every four hour or no, sorry, one frame every four minutes. So <laughs> it would the Ooh. five point five one would be like five hours fifty one, <laughs> or it'd actually be like twenty hours. Here's a really good question, though. As a utility 3D developer, do I have to worry about these types of glitches appearing in my game? Now, yes, uh, yes and no. Doesn't doesn't it only <laughs> apply due to popularity as well? I mean, um, you need a lot of people in the community to really be investigating this kind of stuff, right? Uh, yes and no. There are people who are more skilled at this than I am that that are capable of figuring that sort of thing out on their own. Um, anyone who writes software can write bugs that are exploitable. And you just have to have good good coding practices. You have to like know what this know what good security practices are. Anyone who's writing code, I mean, yeah, you're right. Some 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 targets are less popular to try and attack. So that that's certainly true. But like, if the guy's asking the question, it probably means that there's people who might want to exploit it. <laughs> right yeah because i even for me though like i'm strictly rta like i've done a little bit of tasking and stuff like that but even for me so, something like this i wouldn't be able to i wouldn't be able to figure out i'd be able to uh mimic it and manipulate it but as far as figuring it out no i'm i'm, I'm a poser i'll just, I'll just copy <laughs> <Yeah>. you guys <laughs> now that's the cool thing i actually really like i actually really like when i get to take a route that i've figured out and show it to the community and other people get excited and like figure out better ways to get the like RAM addresses set. Cause like other people have great ideas for how to actually execute the stuff. And, um, and usually like what I come the route I come up with is not like that close to the route we end up actually doing mm -hmm. people figure out all kinds of cool, th cool ways. Cause they know more about like tricks you can do or, or just have other like experiences. And so yeah. it's really fun to see what the community comes up with whenever I come up with a new route. Agreed. Agreed. We're not going to dwell too much into the Mario thing. Um, today we're just gonna stay focused on the the ACE but uh, somebody asked me what do what do I think the shortest human possible time will be and me I have no idea currently we've got a very low time of in the 40s I, I what is the task time right now okay so the task time is 40 is 41.65 oh, wow, or something you're pretty close to the task um, but but tasks are timed from power on 
Ah, uh, okay, okay. So Different timing if, method. If, if a tasser so, RTA'd it, what would it be? Uh, the RTA time is around 34 seconds. So we're... Uh, we're like ten seconds off that, and 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 to a certain extent, I don't think we're gonna like ever hit hit that. Like, Do I don't you guys think, think you're ever gonna possible. hit sub forty? <sighs> Unle uh, okay, let's pretend nothing new ever was invented. Do you guys? Yeah, think if nothing new is invented. It's not gonna be sub forty. I think forty three or so. If it's like the same route, but with like some like optimizations about movement and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think forty three is. Probably like maybe optimistic. Dude, I got a forty-one I, I, on camera. I forty-four is it. possible. Like we, we know that forty-four is possible. I, I think I've had a forty-four pace run that didn't finish, mm -hmm. um, or a couple. And I think I, I think the other runners have too. So forty-four is possible. I think 44, 43 may, might be, but I'm not. It might be optimistic too. Yeah. But um, th there's there's there are some things like in in, uh, in the task, for instance, um, the task actually uses buttons that don't exist on a controller. It, it, like uh, might as well use all the tools right yeah i guess um it, it's i uh, personally i wish that they did i wish the task would do it uh you know using only buttons that exist on real controllers so but, what do you mean buttons that don't exist i don't know what that means so the the task sort of imagines like it's like like it's like taskbot basically taskbot plugs in through the controller port mm -hmm. and it can send whatever data it wants mm -hmm. uh whereas if you have actual controllers hooked up to, through multi-taps um there are there are some bits that get transmitted to the Super Nintendo that are just always zero, because there's just no buttons hooked up to like those bits. Yeah, and moreover, like for instance, you can't press left and right at the same time. And exactly. actually, there's some controllers where if you like push it really hard, you can, but we we generally don't allow it in the speedrunning yeah, community. Yeah, you, you can't do that. <laughs> right. Whereas in the tasks, in, ta in, in tasks, it's totally fine. Of course. And so so there's there's buttons that don't exist. There's left and right at the same time. So it's doing things that not only like even if you you know had superhuman reaction time or whatever now i don't i don't know if that's possible. i don't know if that applies to like other tasks but i've seen tasks in super mario world where when they're in the water they're holding the shell to the right but they're facing backwards is that the same kind of concept like I, in that, that instance, are they holding left and right at the same time I th i'm not sure about that specifically i think usually those are like pressing left and right every other frame because it only actually like modifies your speed every other frame okay so i think they're usually actually swapping back and forth every other frame in those so they you have the extra four is what furious is saying yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's exactly right console the, the console pulls 16 bits from controllers but most controllers only transmit 12 bits Insane. actually there is there so the four bits that are remaining are called the id bits and so like the snes mouse has has different values than a Super Nintendo controller for the, on those four bits, and like uh, Super Scope has different values. Uh, I actually have a controller. It's like a numpad. It's got a numpad in it. It's really <laughs> weird controller. Super rare. Uh, uh, that's actually like has some kind of ID weird, bits. weird Coleco or whatever it is. It, it's from NTT Data. It was, it was used originally with the NTT modem, which. I think they planned a bunch of things, but the only actual thing that they ever did with it was, like, horse gambling. You could, like, connect to a server and gamble on horse races with, with <laughs> oh the NTT God. modem. And so they had made this numpad controller that was supposed to be paired with it. And I don't even know. But it has numpads. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but but really none of that matters for, for what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is it's a normal controller. It has all the regular buttons, but it, the ID bits are different. And you yeah. can actually do different code with that in the you know, joypad auto read registers which i was talking about earlier the the you know where the current route actually reads code from so you could actually do things using numpad controllers that you can't do with normal controllers but i i've restrained myself actually to be honest <laughs> thank you to be honest i need to be fully honest because i actually found the newest route because i was looking for ways i could exploit <laughs> the numpad controller that's crazy was, so that's that's another <laughs> That's another short way, like, of explaining how, how these things are discovered, right? Sometimes just purely by accident. Yeah. Not saying that yours was purely by accident, but that, that is a true thing. Like, sometimes things can just happen on accident. Yeah. But... Actually, for this one, I also... Another, another thing I, I did was uh, I wrote a script that would just, like, try writing every possible value that you could jump to uh, and, like, seeing what would happen and, and, like, automatically recording if something good happened. So I like I just like loaded a state in a task and like played it forward a frame and saw if like writing that particular value worked and then yeah. I like loaded the state wrote a different value and just like 
Try it again and try it again. Thousands of different values to find the, the jump locations that actually works. Somebody asked, uh, what, what was your education? You said you had a, uh, is it a degree? Yeah, yeah, I have a bachelor's degree in computer science. Right on. And I worked okay, at Microsoft so, for three years, too. So with that, um, with the whole speedrunning thing, th this will be more of a, a broad question. So so why why this? Why do you... <laughs> why do you do this in super like you got all you got all these crazy backgrounds with like schooling and stuff like that why why does it all like bring you back uh to doing this <laughs> stuff like why why does this interest you speedrunning these glitches and the hunting and stuff like that i do it because i can well i've been a <laughs> of course i've of been course. A, i've been a professional youtuber for the last six years you're like a terminator uh, I, of super mario world i i, I uh <laughs> i i uh I quit my job at Microsoft. I was a programmer at Microsoft. Cool. Uh, but my YouTube channel was really successful, and uh, and and ever since then, it was 2012. I've been uh, I haven't I've been you know independent. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was Minecraft originally is what I did. Um, but I, I I mean getting into like starting to watch AGDQ and and I mean I always I always paid attention to SDA Speed Demos Archive. I was of course. I was would like randomly go and check out you know whatever random run they always had like the it was like news broadcasts on their front page i loved it right yeah. they they, they yeah. gave you like a little like message board on, on top of your run they were like he smashed yeah. it out and it was always so much fun but, but yeah. once i saw agdq 20 i don't know i think it was 2013 uh, once i saw that and i realized that people like did live speed runs i always thought it was something you just did offline once i, I people, realized people like streamed it i got addicted yeah it, kind of just like I with darby and right it was just yeah. like checking it out and yeah and and uh and for me with my specific background like i love the technical side i love learning from these streamers who know a ton about their games what how the game is working at like a very technical level so and it's very similar to what i would do in minecraft as well i i, I did very technical work in minecraft a lot of engineering and um yeah so at the so beginning just, were you like were you uh were you super pleb at the beginning did you ever go into someone's stream and you're like why did you jump there like yeah, did you, were you yeah. like that at once yeah, uh, I went. Into, I remember going to X Paco's stream. He he was going for world record attempts in uh, 11x at the time. That was before Cloud was discovered, mm -hmm. and uh, and I, I just sort of like, I was I was. I mean, everyone starts out horrible at speedrunning, well, and I'm course. still not great. I'm, I, my trick is to get world record is is I'm not good at games. I just like invent new categories or so, new routes, right? Yeah, exactly. And and because you watched people from GDQs, I mean, that just kind of pushed you in. A mild direction towards speedrunning. Speedrunning isn't your full background when it comes to game, like you just said. Like, like you yeah, like it, yeah. but you don't think you're like amazing at it. But you like the aspect of discovering new routes and new strategies and stuff like yeah. that. The, the exploring. Yeah. That's one of my and, favorite parts too about speedrunning as well. I like taking it to different places, or or just simply doing things that nobody has ever thought of. Yeah. Because then it changes the way people look at it, and you know. And I think my background is just is well suited to doing things that a lot of other runners aren't capable of doing just like i just have specific knowledge that lets me you know dig into dig into things that the other runners can't did you have really... a did you have a big childhood with uh with mario or nintendo or any of that oh, stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah uh we yeah i mean I, I played mario 3 when i was you know like five or something six we all did we all like did that. of course and super mario world uh definitely one of the one of the, the hot games of my childhood so did you ever um, have a sega yeah, we had a Sega. We had oh god, what did we have? For, we had like it was like Cool Driving or something. <laughs> but we had Sonic. Road, all, all Road Sonic Rash. Too. Yeah, Sonic yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, and, and I played a lot of Sonic too. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, me too. I I, I like. I always had the twos, right? At Sonic Two, Mortal Kombat Two, Street Fighter. Always the twos. Yeah, there's a good question from Master of Pants. Why didn't you have Dwango do a verify in the original credits warp before attempting a real? On real hardware, uh, so Dwango is is the guy who basically he's the guy who has Taskbot, right? Mm -hmm. he, he physically owns it and he, he puts all the work into it. And so he a lot of what he does nowadays is he verifies tasks on real hardware. Um, so the the question is why didn't I ask him to console verify? Uh, and the answer is well I didn't know him back then. I didn't know anybody back then. This was no, nobody like nobody from the task community talked to me because I didn't. Do have anything to do with tasks? Yeah, exactly. Right? I was a, I was I was a crappy eleven exit speedrunner. I was, you know, maybe I was like number ten on the on the list or something. Um, and 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 moreover, I'm not I'm not I'm not sure he like did a ton of that back then. 
Like, I think he worked with... A lot like, of the Roman TaskBot Master stuff Game. was in development back then. Yeah. If, if you are referring to, like, 2013 yeah. and 14, it was just... Uh, it, was, it was more like 2015. It, it, like, TaskBot worked, and it was, like, it was doing stuff at... Uh, like, I think that was the... That may have been the year that they showed off Snake and Pong? Maybe that was SGDQ the year before or something. But, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't know him, and I didn't know anyone community and, and actually master june got mad at me for not like uh <laughs> for not like ref like when i made my big video that got went super viral about the very first credits warp on console like mm -hmm. i didn't didn't give credit to any of the task community and it's just, like i didn't even know that much of the history yeah it was just, I just an saw accident Jeff W's right? run. yeah and so yeah <laughs> <You got mad laughs> <at me>. whoops <laughs> yeah but but everyone's credited properly at this point anyways so yeah it's, it's yeah. You know, it's, it's never like one of those, like, you knew you should have credited someone, but you didn't. You know, it was never like that. So, yeah. luckily, everything, everything. Uh, I think I'm usually did. pretty good about crediting people when, when it's due. Well, people want, people want to be respected for the hard work they put into things, right? So, yeah. you, you know, you're going to highly credit yourself for all the hard work you put in. But you you'll, yeah. you don't get any joy lying about fake work you've put in, right? So, there's, right. there's nothing nothing enjoyable about that. But with all with all of that said, is there... For everyone out there who who do the, these kind of complicated runs and and tasses and credit warps, do you have any advice for any of them? Any anything to like lift any spirits mm -hmm. if anyone's having any trouble? Yeah, there's a couple runners. <laughs> Anyone who's trying to run this route is having trouble. It's hard. By the way, you're currently watching the world record, uh, the current world record. This is yeah. Um, <laughs> just a reminder. Just just for those. Um, we'll start it over again for you guys. It's uh. <clears throat> It's like, yeah, you really have to practice. Like every every little thing needs needs practice. I think. Well, it, how it's... do you get through? How do you get through those times where you're just not getting it? Like, how do you, how do you tell yourself the next day? You know what? Let's let's fail a billion times again today. I'm okay with that. Like, how do you how do you convince yourself that that's okay and that you can keep doing it? Because there's a lot of people out there who yeah. just who stop and give up because they are they keep failing, right? They they don't gotten... achieve what they're trying to get. <laughs> I've gotten a lot better at that. Uh, I used to be a lot more disheartened when things would just not go my way for an entire stream. Um, I think it helps to like sit down actually like during practice while you're practicing mm -hmm. each little trick that you're doing spends, uh, spend a little while, use it, set up a save state with whatever hardware you have for save states and do a hundred attempts on each trick. And I mean, that's going to take a while, but you know, it's good practice anyway. Mm -hmm. And, and record the number that you get, right. Record the number that you like do successfully. Okay. And you get it like a percentage out of that. Right. And if you do that for every trick that's in the run and you multiply all those percentages together, that's the probability of finishing a run. And that's usually like, you, you get what I'm saying? No, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're trying to you're trying to you create think. an equation through probability and skill right. with um, maximum amount of attempts. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right. And it doesn't account for like nervousness or like things going weird or whatever. But it's just like a, it's like a you're usually just a the number broad is lower example. Than you think. And and but if you know that number and the number is like you know two percent or something, when you finish a run and it doesn't work. You know, you, you didn't get the time you wanted. You failed a trick that you wanted. You don't have to get sad because you're. You can say to yourself, like, okay, come on, like, this, like, you know, 0.5 percent chance of finishing didn't happen this time. I'm not going to get upset over that, right? Yeah, the, 0.5, the trick, right? Like, like, really, the trick to getting that, like, the time you want is is to be consistent and do it the number of times till you do like get that, you know, 0.5 percent chance to yeah. all line up. Exactly. Yeah, two percent might be a high, is actually probably a high number for a lot of things. You should always be satisfied with your PBs as well, right? Oh, okay, yeah. so oh, yeah, you're, I... you're you're you want to save thirty seconds, but you saved point five seconds. Don't be don't yeah. bum yourself because you've still done better than you've ever done before. There should be no I reason think, to be upset. I think people get way too, like people have just way too high standards. A lot of runners have way too high standards for where they want to be. They know what the perfect run is like and they want it so bad. Right, yeah. But but they don't have proper respect for like how rare probabilistically that run is of happening. Some runs, just, just yeah, because definitely. Because of, you know, human error. Variance.
Well, so. uh, people have asked me many times, well, Mitch, why don't you create a ROM hack that has the hands taken out and the early hammer and see what time you can get? And it's because realistically, I would never achieve that because the nerves, right? Like human error. There's yeah. like, I can't, I can't practice being nervous. Nobody can. Yeah. You have yeah. to, you have to put yourself in that position and then yeah, see how you Yeah, that's the only strive. practice you get. Exactly. Yeah. And that's where a lot of attempts, attempts and resetting comes from. It, it's very good practice, but yeah. yeah. So a, as you guys have seen from a lot of people we've done interviews from, a lot of it just comes from, you know, just keep trying and, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah. You know, so it's good stuff. Oh, look at that first try. Boom. <laughs> you <laughs> fell in between the two pipes, Scrub. <laughs> yeah, that was a little embarrassing. Can't even jump. In some of these runs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well it's good to hear your history man it, it's really good to hear the history of this as well and and um i i was i had no idea that everyone played a particular role in this yeah. and now for me in this interview that was probably the best thing to hear was that you know panga got a chunk and dram got a chunk you know area 51's going for it now and and furious is is played a particular role and then we got all these people and then you're in it's so cool brings yeah, community yeah. together yeah there have been a lot of people who have just like contributed little bits to, to different parts of the run. It's yeah. cool. Well, with that being said, is there anything else you would like to say be right before we wrap this up? Uh, aside, aside from goodbye, guys, and have a good day. <laughs> no, I, uh, that's good. Uh, check out my check out my Kill Bowser runs coming up in the next couple of days. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So if you want, you can, if, for anyone who doesn't know him, you know, throw in your YouTube and chat, right? Give, throw in your give, YouTube. Give and, plug. Yeah, so yeah, plug your Seth YouTube, Ling. plug your Twitch, plug your Twitter, right, right in chat. For anyone who doesn't know Seth Ling, watch, watch oh, okay. the content he creates. It's, it's very good. What is your, it's oh YouTube. yeah, right, I got to ask. YouTube.com slash Seth Ling, Twitter.com slash Seth Ling, Facebook.com slash Seth Ling. Uh, <laughs> Facebook. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Facebook's just mirror Twitter though. But, uh, uh, well, I gotta ask this: What's your favorite topping on pizza? Uh, yeah, for some reason, my mind went to pineapple, and it's not my favorite thing, but like, it's I like it more. Like, out like I'm an outlier because I actually like it. Uh, uh, uh favorite. Oh, I'm so generic. I uh, pepperoni and cheese is me. Yeah, but it's probably pepperoni. Like, <laughs> right? it's probably it's, the it tastes best. Tastes so good. Like, like, <laughs> you add anything else to pizza, and like, if there's pepperoni, on, pepperoni on it, it's still just gonna make it better. Exactly. Like I say to a lot of people, okay, so you like meat lovers, right? You like bacon and sausage, sure. But yeah. if I didn't have bacon and sausage, would I still eat pizza? Yeah. Right. So it's pizza's just too universal for me. Oh, that's so good. It's just so good. Well, thanks, <laughs> thanks for coming out, and thanks for yeah. doing doing no the problem. thing, man. It was lots of fun. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah, I'm glad I got to uh, brain pick you. It was really fun. Oh, you can brain pick me anytime, Mitch. There we go. Remember that time at GDQ where I told you to wait right there and I came back and you didn't wait right there, but you were actually <laughs> still there just hiding behind the table? <laughs> I don't remember that. Actually. Mind fuck, man. You got me. Like me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, say your goodbye, guys. It was, okay. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot for coming out. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna catch up with you uh, in a little bit on on uh discord so don't go too okay. far all right all right sounds good thanks right, a lot care. dude bye yeah did you guys did you guys enjoy that hold on a sec Let me get the good quality mic up here like that. Yeah, you guys like listening to the good quality. Yeah, the interview was fun. Did you guys have a lot of fun? Hope you guys had a lot of fun. Crazy informative. I know, right? Like there was so much stuff that I that I didn't know. Hold on, one of my lights blew out. Give me a second here to fix this.